Jared Blay is a part of the opposition in Queensland and he joins us now because there's been some recent reporting about to kind of go slow from the Queensland government right now, apparently. So far this year, only 20 pieces of legislation uh, and they've only sat for about uh, 305 hours, so they're not exactly passing a whole clip of new laws. I've got to be honest, Jared, given this government, I'm more than happy for no extra regulation, no more laws, no further sort of handcuffs to the economy. But you sit in that parliament, you see how it works. When they're not passing legislation, what are they doing? Well, good question, Paul, and that's the question we've been asking the government. And the Leader of the House, who is also the uh, under fire health minister, Yvette Darth, was saying this week that it's not always about legislation, it's not the quantity, she's saying it's the quality. Oh. And I said, well, the quality's not been too crash hot in the last few years either. So that's the big problem in Queensland. We've got a go slow government, they're not introducing legislation. And bear in mind, legislation can also be repealing legislation, you know, debating to get rid of bad laws in the state. Right. So we're not seeing that, we're seeing fewer fewer sittings of the parliament. Uh, so really go slow in Queensland at the moment. Yeah, so, I mean, in terms of priorities, it's fairly obvious what their strategy is, which is, you know, we've had two years of the cover of COVID. Now they hope for, what, 11 years of the cover of the Olympics when, when all else fails. Look, here's the design for the pool. Media, <laughs> please follow. And they will. Um, but what are some things that, are, that the parliament should be dealing with? Uh, you know, obviously you don't have the numbers, but what should the parliament be introducing or repealing? Well, the biggest, the biggest thing the Premier spoke about today with glee and excitement was the fact that today we're celebrating 100 years since the Labor Party abolished the upper house in Queensland. <laughs> and we've been saying that transparency and accountability, uh, needs, we need more of it in Queensland. And the committee system we've got, which was established instead of the upper house, uh, is a complete basket case. We've got ru ru the government ride roughshod over opposition, crossbench members, all members of parliament if they don't agree with them. We've got a business committee that meets, which is a complete waste of time. I'm involved in that business committee on Mondays where the government just say what's going to happen for the week anyway. Uh, but you're right, for two years they've been talking all COVID. We've seen less parliamentary sittings. Uh, we've seen, you know, the Treasurer re rarely talks about business support. Where's the packages for business support? Where Where's the parliament talking about the Queenslanders stuck over the border for the where's the financial support for those people you know these are the things we should be talking about but uh, we're not at the moment we rarely the parliament rarely sat last year rarely sat the year before and I just think it's because we've got lazy ministers and I'll tell you this Paul we've got ministers that are so lazy that they are enjoying the fact that there's no microscope on them because obviously with COVID, the Premier, the Deputy Premier, the Treasurer, the Health Minister, so the microscope's been taken off these ministers. But as soon as we are out of this pandemic, I can assure these ministers, these incompetent ministers, that we're going to show the public of Queensland who they are and what they haven't been doing for two years. Well, also, you know, they really showed their fangs in the last uh, six months before that election. Again, cover of COVID, nobody's interested in the detail. They changed the election uh, spending limits, uh, all of those things. They, uh, they, the, literally, the last piece of legislation they wanted to bring in the parliament, Yvette Diath, former Attorney General, now Health Minister, Leader of the House, right? They wanted to introduce a law that would make it illegal for someone like myself to go on television and say, insert person who's running for the insert party is being investigated by the Corruption Commission. That was one of their legislative priorities, just in case they weren't going to win that last election. That gives you an insight. I always think what they do just at the end is, is, is the little insurance yep. and also a little statement of where they truly want to go. Correct, and that's exactly what Anna Bly did when she was going out in 2011. They put in legislation to change the electoral system, to change the committee system, uh, to favour the, for the, for the Labor Party if they were in opposition. So what we're seeing here is the classic examples of a third-term Labor government. Uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk was Anna Bly's uh, apprentice, so what we're seeing here is no different. Uh, but the reality is as well, Parliament is very chaotic. So although we sit less and we sit less hours each day, when we do sit, they absolutely run around like headless chooks. They've got no idea what they're doing. I'll give you an example this week. We've got a new governor, Dr Young, starting and being sworn in on Monday. Some bright spark in the Queensland Labor government only worked out yesterday that they have to amend legislation urgently, and we had to deal with it in Parliament yesterday. So the amendment was introduced. We had to deal with it because 
when Jeanette Young finishes as governor of Queensland at the end of her term, she was going to be entitled to two pensions paid by the taxpayer, <laughs> one governor pension and one public service pension. So some bright spark only figured it out yesterday. The Treasurer had to move an urgent amendment in Parliament and then we were debating that all day yesterday and then, of course, they guillotined it to have it done by tonight. Like, yeah. I just keep asking Yvette Darth, what on earth is going on? How can you be in government for so long, nearly seven years, and still completely not a clue what they're doing? Yeah, 100%. You know, they understand the process of the politics, but the act, you know... But again, don't you love it? This was, of course, the governor who people were walking up to me saying, who will be the next governor? Anyway, thank you very much, Jared. Nice to talk to you, mate.